Hello? Yeah, sorry, my baby's having a fit. And I did tell you about the phone call, about me finding the maps in California before. I, I wasn't able to tell you the whole thing. It was when I told you that I called it, the, the police department to give them the maps at around 4 in the morning. So you telling me that I never told you that before four, isn't true. Actually, actually, you said that you did it at 2 in the morning. Maybe that was 2 in the morning. 2 in the morning, California, California time. time but four. it doesn't matter yes. if it was 2 or 4 in the morning. That doesn't mean that you were in California at the time. Now, maybe you were. Maybe you weren't. I was. You All you have to do is call the police to verify. You can get the records. They recorded. All, they record all their calls. Listen it's very easy. Second, to but this is what I'm trying to tell you. The timeline was deleted by the same person who got into the email. And the, what you also don't understand is, is that map that you gave to the police, which you never, and it makes no sense. You keep talking about a screenshot. When you take a screenshot, it shows the whole screen. What you gave is, is, is a partial. When you look at the Google timeline, you, you didn't take a screenshot of the whole timeline. You took a part up to the right of just the map. That's what you gave to the police. And what you gave to the police is not what was on in um, Henry's portion. It wasn't there. You deleted something. So now we know I what did. you deleted. I know what was there. I knew what was there last night. I told you I just want to make sure that we're working with you and everybody's being up front. We're only going to be able to help you and find his killer if you help us. But you're not helping us. Not at all. It makes no sense that you pay money to us and then keep lying to us, leaving information out, or giving us new stuff every time you're questioned. And it looks, you look super guilty out of all the different things is when you told Tim and the other person to take the battery out of their phone. Because the FBI may be watching you. There should be no reason you should tell them. The police are on. Did they tell you the rest of that? Did you tell them the rest? Of, did they tell you the rest of that conversation? Listen, I bet that was all they told you. Listen to me. You told them, and like you told me last night, about that the police cannot track you if a person pulls their phone out. You wanted to have a private conversation with them. You told them to pull the battery out of their phone. And then Did they Henry, tell you the rest you, of the conversation? But listen, Did they but tell it you? About no. The you could have told them that you it just met Jesus. The thing no, is, no, it matters because the whole conversation. Failed, but you're not hearing me. You just told someone to take the battery out of their phones. Then your husband is found. And your husband has the battery taken out of his phone. People just don't go around taking the batteries out of their phone. They turn their phones off. But they don't go around taking the battery out of the phone. Do you know how that looks? This is a piece of information you should have told us. This is a piece of information that the police also have. This is a piece of information that would also be in front of a jury or a grand jury, and they're going to say the same damn thing. Why would you take the battery out of your phone unless you were pulling the battery out to put a new fresh battery in? Who takes the battery out of the phone? Why not just turn the phone off? And why are you worried about someone tracking you and stuff like this when you're out looking for your husband? And why are you telling the other ones to take their batteries out of their phones too? So it looks like you have a pattern of taking batteries out of phones and Henry's body now appears with the battery out of there. The other thing that doesn't make sense too is this. You, what you told me back in October it's the same thing that you told some of the other people, that Henry 
phone was in his pocket. It sounded like he was butt dialed you a couple times and all of this. This is the conversations you had with me back in October. But now, yeah. and according to your phone records, your whole thing now is Henry was answering the phones. Because I keep what do you mean Henry was? Henry called you, you called Henry, all of this stuff going back and forth. It wasn't any butt dials because you were on the phones with Henry. You were having conversations. You did three-way calls with Henry on there the were only Hold on. There were only a couple conversations in which he was responding to me. The what? 157, he and I, hold, hold on. The 157, he and I spoke directly. The next conversation, he, um, me, and JT spoke. You see? All of the other, all of the other phone calls in which his phone and my phone were connecting, he wasn't responding to me. So that was one of the reasons why I wasn't certain whether his phone was butt dialing me or not. Hold it. I asked you again last week and the other day, I asked you this. I said to you, did it sound like he had his phone up there? When you called JT on three-way, he responded and told JT that he was supposedly on his way home and everything was fine, right? Yes, okay. yes. So now, he wasn't drunk. We already know that. We already know he wasn't drunk. And he wasn't drunk enough to sit there and tell JT he was fine because JT would have heard in his voice that, hold on, you may say you're fine, but you do sound drunk. He didn't sound like that. That's why JT, who's his friend, didn't go over there to go get him. Now, then, then why? Hold on. No, no, no. I have to disagree with that. And the reason why I disagree with that is because the first, when I put JT and Henry on, on three-way, the reason why JT started asking Henry where he was was because of the things that Henry was saying. That's why he asked. And then, so that doesn't say, make but sense. But didn't say that was the first time, but didn't you say that JT told you, girl, he's fine. He just said he was fine. He's almost home. I don't need to go get him. Now you're saying JT was concerned about him? Can you listen to me? When I, when, I called, when I called JT the first time without Henry being on three-way, I was telling him that he needed to go get Henry. He, was, he didn't want to go pick him up, so I called him three-way with Henry. Come on, baby. Hold on. Come on. Let's put milk in your bottle. So I called him three-way with Henry so that he could hear Henry and what he was saying. When he heard the things that Henry was saying, he asked him where he was. When Henry heard JT's voice, that's when he told him that he was fine and he was almost home. He wasn't but dying. But JT, J no, that was a conversation. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That so was one of the few times. That was one of the few times. Hold on. That's one of the few times that Henry responded. Very few. Hear me out again. Hear me out. You only spoke to – this is what I asked you the other night. When you called Henry, you spoke to Henry when he left the club, okay? Yes. Henry, you spoke for five minutes. He said, I'll call you back. You hung up. And what did you do? You called JT? No. I, I, I have to look at the call log. It was no, either I called call Henry back or I called back. JT. Now, Henry, I be here. Now, when you got JT on the phone the first time, you guys spoke for five minutes. I asked you if you kept saying to me, and I repeated it back to you, that JT told you, Henry's fine. I don't need to, um, he's fine. He said he's fine. He's almost home. And I said, that's not a five-minute phone call. What did you guys talk about for five minutes? He, that was the conversation in which he was trying to give all sorts of reasons who had – he was making up some story about who Henry had picked – who Henry had gone off with and all this other stuff. His story wasn't even making sense, but he was trying to tell me that Henry was fine. When he wouldn't listen to me, I, got, I called him and, and Henry three-way. So that's that's why I called him and Henry three-way. Yes, that's why I even called Henry three-way, so so because JT wasn't JT. listening to me. Now you're on the phone with JT for a second time for seven yes. minutes. Yes. For seven minutes it on was, the second call. It was me and Henry and JT on conference call. So here's my thing. When you called JT the first time, 
and Henry told him he was fine. You hung out with both of them. What do you mean, JT? The first time I spoke with JT, Henry wasn't on three-way. So you called JT direct? Yes. That's what I thought a second ago. You said you had to look at Carver, but okay. So you called him, and that's right after JT walked out of, I mean, Henry walked out of the club. It was after I spoke with Henry. This is what you said to me a long time ago, that you called him, you hadn't spoken to him, but you had been calling him all day. Well, we know you did speak to him earlier that day. He called you, you called him. There were several conversations that happened earlier that day. But that's different from what you said. So let's move on. So now we go back to the club. Now you're at the club. JT, you call him. No, you call, no, you call Henry. At once it, Henry. I called Henry. Henry sounded Henry like he was just he getting called, out of the club. Sound like he was getting out of the club, and you said that you asked Henry, what are you doing? You're at the club. You're supposed to be home studying. Yes, studying. Yes. Now. And he said he, said he knew, baby, and he hung up. Now, he's, no. What you said was this. He knew, baby, I'm going to call you back in five minutes. Right back. Yes, yes, yes. He, go, he was going to call me back, and then we hung up. Now, at that point, he was so, he was still fine. He answered the phone, told you that he should be studying, which I don't understand why he would be studying because that was a holiday weekend. He didn't because have he was phone. studying. He was, yes, he, he was studying for his CPA exam. But he didn't have school on Monday, so what made you think that 2 o'clock in the morning he would be home studying? Because he told me he was going to be studying for his CPA exam. The CPA exam, the, the, the check even hit the account. Here's my thing, though. You guys were arguing that day. You were arguing with Henry that day. See, the same way you're standing right now, and what you said to me a long time ago is if everything was fine, he was supposed to, I thought he was going to be home, he was supposed to be moving out here. And the way you made it seem like when you first spoke to me is that Henry, everything was fine, and he was getting ready to pack up and move to California the way you made it seem like. And then all of a sudden he just disappeared. But now you're saying that Henry told you that he was going, he was going to be fine, he's, he's going to be at home, and he's going to be studying for the, CP, the um, CPA. Uh, no, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. I didn't say that he said that, that he was going to do that that night. I told him that he should be studying for the CPA exam. That's what I said to him. Here's the thing, though. He had just erased He just erased the software off the phone the day before. No, it wasn't. August 30th was when he swiped his device. He swiped the device the day before he went missing. No, he swiped his device August 30th. That was when I was unable to track him. The, the proof is even on the SMS tracker. So... This is even so this is worse then. So he swiped it on the thirtieth. So what was that? A week before August thirtieth, thirty first, and he went missing on the seventh. So that was almost a week. So that whole week he set up that new bank account that same week too. No. He didn't. When I found the bank papers, the U.S. bank account, I believe, was set up in, I think, the, the, the third week of August. And that's easy to verify, too. <laughs> so what you're saying is you found out about the second bank account when? It was after the his job had informed me that you know when i had that whole conversation with him that's when i found out about that bank account i didn't even find out when he created that bank account until a couple weeks when after when did you go into his email then what were you looking for in his email 
I was always like before before he swiped his account, I was always checking to see if he was emailing females because that's how I caught him with that female from Texas. She he'd been emailing her. So that's when you got the password to his email. No, because when he swiped his phone, he reset everything. Including what? Everything. He reset everything. Even his email password. Yeah, that was why I couldn't get into his email, because he reset everything. He reset it so that it could only go to his device. And when I couldn't track his text messages, I couldn't reset anything. So when did you call or go to T-Mobile? I didn't report, uh, I didn't try to replace the phone with T-Mobile until October. I think it was like the very, very end of September, the beginning of October. That's when you went to T-Mobile. That was when I called them about replacing the device. And where were you at when you did this? When I was calling them about replacing the device, I was in Minnesota. So, but T-Mobile sent the phone to California? No. T-Mobile didn't send the phone to California. I just said that when the first time that I saw the Google map timeline, the very first time I saw that map timeline, I was in California. But you really don't remember what you said last night, do you? Look, what I do remember is how the conversation ended. I don't remember much of anything else. Let's forget last night. You don't remember what you said to me before that the day before that, or even that earlier that morning, or what you told the other people, including his brother, and... It's what, 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 no, 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 no. First of all, what I'm saying is easily verifiable. Number one, because I called the police. It's on record. Number two, because Just when because I you discovered the those maps... Mean shit. Hold you on. Stop saying you called the police? That doesn't mean anything. What? You didn't call him the night Henry was screaming. So you sitting here saying I called the police at 4 o'clock in the morning doesn't mean anything. What it does mean is this, when you said to me that when you were in, in Minnesota, it was none of that I went back to California shit. You never said that part to us. In all these months, you got on a plane on September 10th. You talked about how you gave the boarding passes and everything else to the police. And you went to Minnesota. I can show you. I can show you the confirmation number for my flight back to California. While you I was may here. have went back <laughs> to California. What I'm trying to tell you is, is that you never mentioned it. This is what I mean when you sit there and you say that we look at you, or other people as well look at you as a suspect. This is because. Every single freaking time, you give new information in every conversation. How come you don't get that? Then what am I supposed to do? I'm trying what to... What you're I... supposed to do is, is, is you're supposed to tell the same damn story every time, or the people that are trying to help you, you are supposed to give them all the information up front so they know what to do. But you don't do that. Can I ask you a question, please? Go ahead. I am, and I understand the problem that you don't have all of the information that I give it, didn't give it all to you all at once. I understand what you're trying to tell me. Is there some way that we can rectify this and move on from here? Because I, I but that's what I thought you this phone call was going to be about when you called. When I called you okay. back tonight, but what you've done in this conversation is that you came up with new information again. Oh, my God. I asked you the other day. I told you that I still had stuff to tell you, and you told me not to say anything because Listen you had to, to talk right about then. something no, else. The stuff that you're, so now you're going to tell me is that the stuff you still had to tell me wasn't on the timeline and this important information you just want to tell all these details you No, tell. it's okay. It's I'm not saying any of that. I'm I'm burnt out. <laughs> okay. All right. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. Well go ahead to sleep. All right. Um 
One more time, one question. Is there information that I need to get to give to you that I can work on tomorrow? I'll let you know. Because at this point, I'm just telling you, you can sit back and you can say that you did not have nothing to do with it at all. But what I'm going to tell you is there's a lot of people sitting in jail for a lot of shit that they didn't do. And right now, you look more guilty than if you had grabbed the gun, pointed it to um, his head, pulled the trigger with a thousand people with video cameras recording it and for live television. That's how it looks right now. You look just as guilty because your story never is the same. Now, I know if I speak to Tim or one of the investigators, when they tell me about you came up with the gas station map, you weren't in California when you came up with the gas station map. What, why are you calling it the gas station map? I mean, That's well, the you map. Said that you pulled it from Google's map. No, no. What I said was, was the first time I saw the Google map timeline, I sent it to them. I started looking up all of the gas stations in the surrounding area. That's what I said. I said that to you. But you know, why did, again, there's a whole bunch that bothers me. This is one, why would T-Mobile send the phone to your house in California when your account... And they didn't send it. Why do you keep saying that? They didn't send the, f- the physical phone to California. They didn't do that. I told you that when I ordered the phone, when I called the insurance company, when I set all of that in motion, I was in Minnesota. I told you that when I discovered the Google Map timeline, the first time I logged in to see the timeline itself, when I first saw it, I was in California. Those are two separate things. Things. How long were you in California? They're not connected. How long were you Just in a couple days. So here's my question. So when you said before, not tonight, but before, that you were in, you were going, you had reset his phone, you were going through his emails looking for this other stuff, and you came across the Google Map timeline. This is what you said yesterday when I asked you the last time about the timeline. Not just last week, but just yesterday. You said you came up with the time. You came across the Google timeline. And that's when you went into the timeline and you saw all the stuff that he had been. And you said that you also, once you saw that, you said you sent the information over to the police. But what you did never say is, is that you were in California when you went into the timeline. But you made it sound like, and I'll... Listen, you made that wasn't like- my intention to make it sound like I was in Minnesota because I wasn't. I was in California. I called uh, uh, the police at, at two o'clock. I think it was California time, almost four o'clock Minnesota time. When I discovered the timeline, I was in California. And well, that's part of the I'll problem. We're trying to give a mountain heap of information all at once. It's very easy for me to verify. It's very easy to verify. Please do. It's even easier for me to verify, and I got to remember because I don't want to mix it up, which IP addresses be, were that logged in, which ones was in California. Like if you were in California, you had accessed his emails from California a bunch of times. I already know that for a fact. Mm-hmm. So you were already in his emails when you were still in California before he came up missing. Up until I, it was up until he swiped his device. But if Daniel, my guy, on my office. Uh, he's, I can't call him now because he works mornings. If Daniel, I could have sworn Daniel said that the Google timeline had been accessed way before he came up missing. That doesn't make sense because I was unable to access his device after he swiped it. No, before he swiped it, before he came up missing. Before he came up missing? I'm talking about all damn year last year. When you were accessing his emails from California, 
there's a California IP address that was also accessing his Google timeline. I accessed his Gmail. I don't remember accessing his timeline. I didn't even know about like tracking of the timeline until after he went missing. And I didn't even need to. It doesn't even make sense because the system that I was using was 100 billion times more accurate than Google. Yeah, but the difference is, it wasn't... In the fact, in fact you if you go before, into the... The software that you were doing before was giving you, that you had on there, was giving you all his text messages and things of that sort. It I, gave me everything. It told me where he was within three meters at times. It told me text messages, who he was calling, where he was located, when he made those texts and calls. Google didn't do any of that from what I saw at when I discovered it. Why in the world? Why in the world would I use something inferior? You see what you just said to me? You see how technical and detailed you were? Did you see I'm the always, difference? Oh my I'm comparing God. the two of the SMS messages and Google Yes, Timeline. because I know how Google Timeline works now. I know how it works now. You're asking me after no, the no, fact. No, 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 no. What I'm saying to you, though, is, is that you knew enough technology because sometimes you play dumb on it. But you knew how to put the software on there, how to go out and find the software, how to download the software onto his phone, install it with the security code and everything else, and then log into the portal and start tracking him. And you did this this entire time. Now, I've done it for, I was tracking him with the SMS tracker for years. Exactly. So I don't see your point. What well, does that have to do with anything with Google? I didn't even know about Google Timeline I'm about until Google. after. I'm not talking about Google right now. What I'm uh, talking about is, is that you were sophisticated enough to do all of that and track this man for years, right? Until he swiped his phone and a week later he came up missing. He didn't come up missing during the whole time that you was tracking his phone. Not at all. He didn't come so up you're missing trying to say that last bank account was there. He didn't come up missing during that same week, his last week, he had talked to three people that we know that we know of so far about the divorce and he's going hit this time and doing it. The other times he was talked out of it, even by Tim. But this last time he was doing it. I didn't know about any divorce, and that's not something he. I didn't didn't know that he. I just didn't know. All I remember was the one com conversation that I communicated to you. That was the one thing he said to me. He never mentioned actual papers. What, what? Uh, what? Remember the conversation where I said, you know, where I emailed his job and he was like, if I did that again, he would excommunicate me. But he never said divorce. He didn't say he had divorce papers. I didn't know anything about a divorce. I still don't believe it. So do you really think after he swiped his phone, you guys were still on good terms? He was always doing stuff like that. He was. All, this hold is, on, this on. is why I keep telling me before he came up missing, you guys were on good terms. What I am telling you is that this is that he and I have had certain these weird patterns and that they're not something new to me. That's why when you guys keep talking about he was going to leave me, it doesn't even sound like it's act, it was actually going to happen. We had like, he, <sighs> you know, what? they didn't have a long, they didn't have a detailed conversation with you. See, what you're saying to me is, is you're being, you're saying kind of cocky that, look, me and my husband argued all the time. We split up. We separated before. He did this and did that. He talked that stuff, but he was never going to leave me. Well, a person can get fed up. That's the reason okay, why, well, that's the reason why he had all these other women too during this time. That's no, that's a lie. He started cheating on me in 2009. That right. was his habit. Right. That was his habit. That was eight, what, how many years? Fifth, 2008, uh, uh, nine to 2015. That's what, six years? He was cheating on you way before you guys had kids, right? No. 
I was I already had Eve. Right. And did you ever did he ever say that or has it ever been brought up to you that you tried to trap him with the kid? No. Okay. So it was never said that Henry thought that for a woman that's so smart and has two degrees that you never want to work. Y'all used to that. argue about it working or about you getting a he job? Said, do you want me to tell you every argument that we had now? Because we had a whole lot in 11 years. It would be kind of difficult to no, satisfy but this you on that one. one. The, this was one of the arguments that you guys had, and this is the reason why you were in your mother's in December? No, that's not why I was in the, in, this, in my mother's house in December. I can tell you some of the arguments that we no, had. But you in say fact, that I he can tell you have to find a place and a job, and then he would come out there. Yes, mother, I'm on the phone, please, please. Okay, yeah, we please. can talk about this later. Go ahead, get some sleep. All right. Hello. Yeah, we can talk about this later. Go ahead and get some sleep. All right. Bye.